Ponds, we're looking forward to that one. But before we get to it, we'll have a couple of heavyweights. Young Shannon Briggs against the veteran Craig Payne. Craig Payne is probably the definition of the word journeyman, and yet he's had some good wins, like a win over Samson Pua this year. A very amicable journeyman, too, as you take a look at his record. 12-9, and nine, the eight knockouts, so when he wins, he's dangerous. Somebody who can find it at any time to get himself going. And he goes against Shannon Briggs tonight, a very, very key matchup for him. Briggs, 20-0, and 0, 17 knockouts, not much action in his fights. He finally finds somebody who can give him some rounds. He looks forward to that tonight. Shannon Briggs makes a habit of fast fights. His 20-0 mark includes 17 knockouts, 12 in the first round. Ron Goulet was one of them way back in 1993. That was the first of five victories for Briggs that year. Briggs was able to shake off hand problems, and he compiled five more wins in 1994. One of the most beneficial came against Mark Young. It was an eight-round win, the longest of his career. Tonight, he faces another fighter who could give him rounds, and he looks forward to it. I have to know. If Curtis Payne goes out to survive, I have to do what I have to do. I have to stay busy with the jab, left hooks, and just keep busy and not stop punching because he's not punching. Shannon Briggs, and uh, you may be wondering, as he might, what are the rules that he is going to be fighting under this evening? Well, we will give you the New Jersey rules, and Dave, there they are. Three knockdown rule in effect. Three knockdowns in one round would end it. The standing eight would count as one of those knockdowns. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. That's new for New Jersey. That's uh, very distinct for New Jersey. The physician may stop the fight. Ten-point must-scoring system in effect. Three judges score the fight. The referee does not figure into it. All right, all the business is done, and now the business left is boxing. Craig Payne and Shannon Briggs will take care of that. Michael Buffer will take care of the introductions. Let's go to him now. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Bally's Park Place Hotel and Casino here on the boardwalk in Atlantic City, New Jersey, where tonight it's top-ranked boxing on ESPN, brought to you in association with your undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Budweiser, proud to be your bud. Well, ladies and gentlemen, before we get started, at this time, as many of you know, a few days ago, the boxing fraternity tragically lost another member. He was considered one of the all-time greats as a middleweight title holder. At this time, I would like to ask everyone to please remain silent as our timekeeper at the bell, Lindsey Tucker, tolls a final count of 10 for the late middleweight champion of the world from Argentina, Carlos Monzon. May his soul rest in peace. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get things started with an eight-round bout. This is in the heavyweight division. When the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, referee Eddie Cotton. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks with gold trim, weighing in at 278 pounds. He comes to us from Livonia, Michigan, and brings a professional record of 12 and 9 with one draw. Eight of his 12 victories are by KO. Ladies and gentlemen, he is Craig Tiger Pay. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner, weighing in at 222 pounds, wearing the black with white trim. His professional record, a perfect one, 20 and 0. 17 KOs from Brooklyn, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, Shannon Briggs. Boxers, you received your instructions in the dressing room. Obey my commands. Let's touch gloves. Have a good, clean fight. That is Craig Payne, the 32-year-old veteran who comes in here off a TKO loss and tend to rate anus in Boston. And Shannon Briggs, the undefeated youngster from New York who beat Mike Faulkner in two rounds in his last outing. Craig Payne is a big one. He weighs in, um, tipping the scales very close to 300 pounds. And he thought that was rather svelte this morning as he's got 36% knockout ratio. Briggs, of course, 85. And he would like the number to go down a little bit and learn from his fights. With big guys like this, the thunder, if it's going to happen, usually comes early. 
Shannon Briggs, a young man who uh, missed out going to the Olympics in 1992, uh, couldn't go to the trials because of hand problems. It's a, something that stalked him during his pro days. He's had injuries to both hands, but says and told us today that for the last six months his hands have felt great, and uh, that's a big plus. He made an interesting point, too, about everybody knows that the fighters can recover from these hand problems. Big punchers always have, but when you're the one going through it, there's always the doubt, and he had those doubts about whether he could really cut loose. And lest you think that because uh, Craig Tiger Payne is uh, wide of girth that he can't hang in there, Beat Samson Kahua, who you've seen here in ESPN, a good young prospect, in six rounds. Went ten rounds with Mike the Bonnie Hunter. And uh, along the way, has fought the likes of Melton Bowen, beat him in five. Beat Rick Sikorsky. Not that that would mean he'd be enshrined in the Hall of Fame, but it means that he can't hang in there with some heavyweights. A uh, heartbeat away. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, he's really starting like he wants this to be a long fight here. Hoping for an opening by Briggs. And with guys like this, it's a question of their heart. How much do they want to stay in there? Because usually, yeah, their careers generally are not going anywhere unless they can get the big winning. How much do they want? Craig Payne assured us today that uh, he was here to try and win this bout. And Shannon Briggs, a young man who is not only a, a good boxer, articulate and enjoyable to talk to, and he is a good beat on what it is to fight these veterans and try and look good while you're doing it. Unless the other fighter brings a suitable style to the fight, you might look bad. But he knows he's at that stage of his career now where he needs rounds and he needs fighters who are going to try some tricks. Nice jab and straight right hand by Briggs. He is just doing his job methodically here in round one. And Craig Payne has been content to let him do it and see what the youngster has to show him. He, Payne said he has never seen Briggs fight. so. This is all a, a new experience for Craig Payne right now. He's testing uh, Briggs to see what he has. So far, Payne has used the whole ring, albeit in a back pedaling way. Good body shot by Shannon Briggs, and he is a good body puncher. So round one goes the way Shannon Briggs would like it. Let's see what round two has to offer. Stay with us. Crystals removed. Ice smoothness remains. A revolutionary way to brew beer. Discover the bad ice. Ice smooth. Ice brewed. And the only one with a patent to prove it. Well, Shannon Briggs is pretty methodical here. Gets the range for his jab and the right hand behind it. As the rounds go on, you see that distance shortened for his right. We head into round two. It's scheduled for eight. The man on the right of your screen now, Craig Payne. And uh, facing him is Shannon Briggs. Payne, a 32-year-old veteran. Briggs, 23 years old. Briggs comes in 20-0. and And for Craig Payne, he is 12-9-1. Well, uh, a tremendous advantage, both landing and throwing by Shannon Briggs. Only one of those, uh, one power shot attempted by Payne, and that will not get it done. Briggs certainly happy with that percentage landed. He is pecking away against Craig Payne. And what's surprising about those numbers, too, in that round is the big guy really gets his best chance early before the more skilled fighter takes over and finds his rhythm. Now, as Shannon Briggs gets loose, it bodes better for him. We see the uh, tiger written on the trunks of Craig Payne. When he says that he is into tigers, he's not kidding. Not only is that his nickname, and he has a um, concrete company called Tiger Paw Concrete Company, he owns a tiger. He literally owns a full-grown tiger. It's one and a half years old. Uh, keeps it in Houston in a cage, and uh, that's quite a mascot. And it feeds the tiger 12 chickens a day. It just it has it all down. How much food the tiger needs, he's got the entire regiment. Tiger, oh, good hook by Shannon Briggs. You also see the tattoo of the tiger on the back of his back. Good left hook downstairs by Briggs. Shannon Briggs is really mixing his attack well. There's a nice jab finally by Payne. Payne told us today the tiger eats 10 to 12 chickens in a sitting. That's just too much. <laughs> wow. 
minute left to go here in round two. But he is a man. He did say he keeps the tiger away from people. Let's just emphasize that. This is an excellent attribute for Craig. Right now, it's Shannon Briggs who is uh, being more ferocious in the ring, landing almost at will. And the left hook to the body he landed about 30 seconds ago may really be a discouraging factor here in this fight for pain. About a half a minute left to go in round two, and uh, so far, Shannon Briggs has just had his way with Craig Payne. Well, he certainly had the scouting report right about expecting Payne to try and survive. So, one-fourth of this fight is over, just about. Come back for round three. Face it, shaving is a pain. It strips away the skin's moisture, leaving it hot, dry, and burning. But now there's proof you can take the heat out of shaving. Introducing Sensitive from Old Spice. It's the one with cooling sensates, an invigorating blast of real refreshment that cools skin scorched by shaving. Prove it to yourself. Try new Sensitive from Old Spice. It's more than a great scent. This is a cooling blast of real refreshment that takes the heat out of shaving. In our main event, Prince Charles Williams steps back in the ring for the first time since his loss to James Tony. He moves back to the light heavyweight division to display his talents against Murky Sosa. Murky has a tough style to deal with and power enough to get 20 KOs and 24 wins. That is still to come in our main event. That's in a while, but for now, that's Craig Payne, who has had two very difficult rounds against Shannon Briggs. The youngster from New York comes out here for round three. It is scheduled for eight. They are heavyweights. I'm Al Bernstein here with Dave Von Temple. We're at Valley's Park Place on the boardwalk. And Shannon Briggs comes out firing with jabs and straight right hands. He has kept his composure well and uh, just going about his business right now. Continuing to throw the jab and not being thrown off really by the delaying tactics here by Briggs. The Really, the Payne's trying to survive. There you look at that uh, unbelievable stat as far as Payne's lack of accuracy. Not one power shot landed in two rounds, and that's his money in this fight. Payne has been able to get the jab in from time to time, but just is loath to throw it. I mean, only 30 punches in two rounds is not good. As you might expect, Briggs uh, jumping out to a substantial lead and Payne certainly reluctant. He's got to fire the right hand, at least cut it loose. I mean, he might hit something. Sound is... <laughs> Can't be any worse than attached to his ear. No, no, I think you've made a very valid point there. <laughs> Double left took by Briggs. It's a, a great weapon for him and he's using it here tonight. We mentioned that he beat Mike Faulkner in his last fight, knocked him out in two. We had him against Mike Faulkner back in February of uh, this past year. A tough fight for him. Faulkner was very awkward, and Shannon didn't get in his rhythm as much as he would have liked, even though he won it. So he's had the two fights with Faulkner, and the, the six-round knockout he had did a lot for him to find, uh, as far as finding flaws. And to come back and get a two-round knockout shows improvement, something you certainly like to see from a fighter on the way up. Well, Payne continues to be uh, less than active offensively, and Briggs happy to take advantage of it. And he has to take what is offered and not shift into a gear in which maybe Payne gets lucky. And those left hooks in the body are very telling, and they're the kind of shots that could make Payne quit if he does. It's Craig Payne landing the jab. It is interesting. He can get the jab in when he throws it. And it can be a very heavy handed jab when he throws. There is Briggs working pretty well out of those blocked by Payne. Briggs told us today it's very important for him to keep his punches flowing. He said, you know, I'm not a one-punch knockout artist. I'm not Mike Tyson. I'm Shannon Briggs. Keeping the punches going is important. 
stay that boxer puncher and he told you about maintaining his mode. You know, as soon as the fighter stops throwing his hands, a smart veteran can counter. He knows that that jab has to be out there at all times. Round three goes into the history books. And it's a happy one for Shannon Briggs and his uh, trainer, Teddy Atlas, should be happy with right? me. Mm -hmm. But I expect you to develop right in front of my eyes. I'll come to your eyes. Do you know what I mean by that? What you can do more, what is conning you out of doing right there? Right? Give me some more. And there is Craig Payne. We talked about the fact that he has a live tiger. He really identifies with tigers, and uh, he explained that to us. It started because I like to eat, and plus I'm, I'm a tiger type of guy, you know. I'm, a, I'm sneaky at some things, and I'm big, I'm strong. And of course, I'm good looking, you know, look at me, you know. So, yeah, I just tried to, it just, it just came out. I'm, just, I'm fascinated with the way the tiger moves through the jungle and how he survived through all the ups and downs in, in the jungle. And it's, he's a fascinating animal. With, I have tons of books and stuff on him, but you start reading about him. They're very interesting animals, and, and they survive through all the hard aches of life. Just like me, I survived through all the hard aches of life. Well, it's been a heartache so far tonight for Craig Payne. He has had three tough rounds against Shannon Briggs, but like a tiger, sneakily, he attacks. He and he's waiting, doing it now. He was waiting for that sound bite. <laughs> I think we may have motivated Craig Payne by running that. How did he know? And how did he know he established a record for futility and not landing a power shot for the first three rounds of a fight? That's now his record oh all to himself. God. Well, that's why he went after it here in, the, here in this round. Well, if, if a guy wants to come on in the middle rounds and take the early rounds off, you couldn't do a better job of taking three rounds off than that. <laughs> yes. And a round off and don't worry about it. Yeah, he didn't, apparently. And, and of course, with this fight, an eight-round fight, for Craig uh, Payne, he's going to have to start making something happen. He got the fight on two weeks' notice, which he normally doesn't get in a fight. He usually takes him on much shorter notice. Nice body work. Shannon Briggs has always been a good body puncher, and as he's developed as a pro, that's been something he's gotten even better at. Shannon Briggs is keying on the face of Payne, realizing that he can go downstairs and then fire upstairs. He's trying to throw more with his right hand over the top now. Try not to be deceived, though, by Payne. We talked about that this morning, too. See the two fighters? Shannon Briggs fainting a little bit as he comes in to, to throw some of his hands. Briggs only had 24 amateur fights, and so he has learned a lot as a pro. Nice right hand by Briggs. And even with the 24 amateur fights, Dave, he was a step away from making our Olympic team. And it shows in the pros how much he's carried over from that promise shown in the amateurs now. He's learned a lot, and he's really engaging in what is a difficult type of a fight for someone in his class. It looks easy right now. He's got a big lead. But these are the fights a fighter can hurt his hand. All kinds of things can happen when you've got such a big lead so early. Under a minute left to go here in round number four. And now about 40 seconds left, so uh, as these seconds wind down, Shannon Briggs does what he's been doing, which is put punches together, land often to both the body and the head. Big right hand to the head of Craig Payne. So round four is winding down with... Just about 10 seconds left in the round. As we go to break, Craig Payne will go to his corner and ponder what he can do to change his fortunes tonight. Stoiko goes for the big one and gets the jump on taste. The taste of McCain frozen punch. Year-round thirst quenching tastes like grape. Orange and McCain fruit punch. Made with real fruit juices for real fruit taste. That makes McCain the punch of champions like Elvis Stoiko. Get the jump on taste. The real fruit taste of McCain frozen punch. Go for McCain. Get the jump on taste. Well, if you think Shannon Brace can land whatever he want, you're right. <laughs> And he's doing just that. We had in the round five. 
That is Craig Payne on the left of your screen. Shannon Briggs on the right. Payne is the 32-year-old veteran. And uh, Shannon Briggs, a 23-year-old undefeated young heavyweight, who comes in here with a 20-0 record, 17 KOs. Payne, 12-9 and 1 with 8 KOs. And we're waiting for Craig Payne. He showed a, a moment of spark in the fourth round, but that's about all we've seen there. Uh, none of the heavy-handedness, and now Shannon Briggs just getting more and more confidence. There he goes, landing a left hook to the body despite the risk of a right-hand counter. Payne had got him in, but Payne could not land the counter right hand and to have more than a 100 punch landed lead after only four rounds uh, of a fight at this weight class is astonishing that is pretty amazing and it speaks a lot toward what craig payne isn't doing also in addition to what shannon briggs is doing you know fighters who weigh this much don't have to be this inactive there was a guy years ago harold rice who used to show up on the ESPN, weighing 280 but for at least two to three rounds of the fight he was pretty dangerous, and if he landed a punch, he could score a knockout. How about Robert Smith, the guy who uh, Craig Payne fought, who weighs over, over 300 and some pounds, close to 400. We saw him against Jeremy Williams, Jeremy Williams yes. and uh, he, he knocked Jeremy Williams down, did he not? He did, won a round in the fight and acquitted himself, and very early. When Smith and uh, Payne fought, there was over 600, 700 pounds of beef in the ring. You had to feel real bad for the ropes, Grant. How many chickens would it take to feed them, do you think, on that <laughs> night? That's a conversion table there, right? <laughs> See, 12 for a tiger. Wow. A little over a minute left to go here in round five. Al Bernstein, Dave Bon Temple, we're happy you joined us for another edition of Top Rank Boxing. We're back east. Next week, we're going to go out to my hometown in Las Vegas. And, uh, we, the merry-go-round continues here on Top Rank. <laughs> Shannon Briggs' biggest opponent in this fight now is complacency and lack of concentration. That's really all he has to worry about. You notice he stayed pretty much in the one gear throughout this fight, taking what's offered, not gambling too much. Very consistent effort. Eddie Cotton, the referee, has had little to do in this bout. There have been almost no clinches and nothing resembling anything illegal done by either man. And a telling right hand to the body by Briggs, and he senses a chance to finish the fight here. Craig Payne has been hurt, and he has been hurt to the body badly. Slapping right hands by Craig Payne. The punch strays a little low from Briggs. So round five, a big round for Briggs, even by his standards in this fight. We'll be back for round six. Protector, a razor so sharp it has to be kept behind bars. Protective guard wires ensure that while the shave is close, there is no safer wet shave. Protector, only from Wilkinson Sword. Yeah, I took the high endurance challenge from Old Spice, because I didn't really think it could work better than my old deodorant. But it does. If you don't think it's the best, call 1-800-PROVE-IT and they'll buy you a stick of yours. Now you got proof. Guaranteed. It takes a long time to get a big man out of there, but the flip side is you can't miss to the body. <laughs> so Shannon Briggs shows you. Big body to hit, and Shannon Briggs has gone after. We're in round six. It is scheduled for eight. They are heavyweights. A reminder that our main event still to come. Jeremy, or not Jeremy Williams, he's a heavyweight. He fought one of these. Well, he didn't fight these guys, but he fought Robert, uh, Smith, Robert Smith, who fought. looks like Craig Payne. I knew I was going to get back to that. It was all there. It was there somewhere. It's your job to figure it out, folks. Prince Charles Williams, that's who we have in our main event. He would be a light heavyweight, and he's fighting Murky Sosa, and that should be a very good fight. Tremendous matchup of two guys who need a big win, and meeting at the right time. So that's coming up, but right now it's Briggs and Craig Payne, and as you look at those numbers, don't you get the feeling Shannon Briggs wants to end this? Well, how many numbers does he want? Payne averaging four, around, four punches landed around. Next week, we're going to be out in Las Vegas. We mentioned Alexis Arguello, and I want to invite you over to see my sports party, which is which, a uh, big news event involving that. Well, Al, I'll have to get there at a different time at the Riviera now, right? Funny you should mention that, because we've changed to 3 o'clock start time over at the Riviera every Saturday for our sports party, and Dave's going to be on hand there in the next couple of weeks to schmooze with the folks, and uh, we have a lot of fun. That's a great show, too. Right here, we have... Uh, we're halfway through round six, and um, 
Shannon Briggs is just having his way with Craig Payne. And these are the rounds in the fight when you know, he'll look back at it and see how he did as far as keeping his pace, being consistent, not being lulled by the lopsided margin. Usually against his other opponents, this kind of dominance would have them out of there by now. He's in a new realm in a sense, and this guy is there for him, making him try new things and making Shannon Briggs grow in his own way during this bout. A minute left to go in round six. It's a little frustrating, too, I'm sure, because Shannon Briggs has been here before where he's whacking away against the veteran. The guy's not going down, even though Shannon's doing all the right things. And there is the temptation to be frustrated by that. And at this point in a fight, and he wants to keep the right hands going, there comes a time during the bout when a fighter gets resigned to the fact it's going all the way. I've landed my best shots, the guy is still here, and a lopsided decision is fine. Under a half minute left to go. There is a left hook from Craig Payne. We've not seen that weapon much from him. And he throws it again. And an overhand right. But he is loath to open up too much because he's getting hit with counter punches like that one. Round six is history. Spicy. Crispy, curly, thrilling. McCain Super Spirals. We love what you've done to our fries. You've spiced them up, curled them up, and turned them all around. McCain has taken its famous super fries, dipped them in light tasting batter, and surrounded them with bite after bite of spicy, crispy satisfaction. You've spiced them up, curled them up, and turned them all around. McCain Super Spirals. Whoa! We love what you've done to our fries. And another big round for Shannon Briggs. He takes a left hook there, then turns around and fires his own combinations right after that. We're heading into round seven. Connecticut, are they playing ball this year or not? I'll Calhoun has got that team rocking and rolling. Connecticut, UMass, what big interest up there as the local powers come together. And a resurgence in the uh, Big East, too. Another telling stat for Shannon Briggs. Tremendous advantage as far as the jabs, and it shows a complete package for him during this fight. The only bout that comes to mind in which a guy landed fewer punches was Ron Amundsen and Dana Rosenblatt, a bout we had here on ESPN a little while ago. I'm not sure Craig Payne isn't going to be dangerously close to the record for the lowest um, landed. In fact, we're told by Bob Canobio Punch Profile that he is a cinch to win this record. Well on his way, and he's got the three-round record already for landing no power punches during the round. And how does it translate as far as scoring? Well, you might expect that he hasn't won a round, and sure enough, he has not. I would disown you if you gave a round. <laughs> <laughs> I would disown me, too. <laughs> but you could plead temporary insanity. I know you could. That's right. <laughs> We're into round seven. Al Bernstein, Dave Bontempo, we're very happy that you joined us for our second show of 1995. One thing during this fight is that Payne, for all the stamina he's trying to save, has stood up between every round. He's not sat down and used the stool to give himself a little bit of a breather, so he's lost already six minutes of recovery time in this battle. Some heavyweights do that. George Foreman, for instance, the, the proponent of that, stands between each round. We saw Mike the Bounty Hunter do it in our last show in 1994. Briggs hitting behind the head of, uh, of Payne. Gets a warning from Eddie Cotton, but maybe a little frustration on the part of Briggs. Under a minute left to go here in round seven. It's scheduled for eight. It has been completely one-sided. Shannon Briggs... And the left of your screen has just dominated Craig Payne. And I think his handlers may be, in a sense, a little disappointed that Payne is not doing more. Even though yeah. a more active Payne would be a bigger risk to their fighter, they wanted to see him against somebody who will fight back, who will make him react to maybe a little bit of adversity, and that hasn't been there tonight. He's had tougher sparring sessions. Yeah, that's true. Teddy Atlas and uh, Mark Roberts is the uh, trainer and manager. 
Uh, both wanted, I think, more out of Craig Payne, and they really haven't gotten it. And let's give Shannon Briggs some credit for that, but Payne has also been very lethargic offensively. We'll be back to close this one out. Stay with us. Have you had your break today? We all need to get away. There's one place that's on your way. McDonald's is your break today. Have you had your break today? Oh, easy one, take McDonald's way. Oh, taste the place of smiling things. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Have you had your break today? Break today. We head into round eight, the final round of this heavyweight encounter between young Shannon Briggs on the right of your screen, 23-year-old from New York, and Craig Payne, the 32-year-old veteran who comes in here with a record of 12-9-1. Craig is from Livonia, Michigan, in the Detroit area, and uh, Shannon Briggs is from Brooklyn, New York. And yet another wow. display of anemic numbers for Payne. Unbelievably low percentage, and Briggs keeping his percentage up there pretty high without much opposition. You know, there's fighting to win, there's fighting not to lose, and in this case, for Payne, there's fighting not to lose big. And that's basically what has happened to him. He's gone into a shell from round one. Yeah, he has done so little offensively. There he pushes a jab out. The one punch that has landed occasionally for Payne is a jab when he's thrown it properly. And it's not like the shots have not been there for him. Briggs is coming in, jabbing, and challenging him to get off the mark a little bit more quickly. Payne has been his own worst enemy tonight. Well, Craig Payne will get in there with just about anybody. He's been in with lots of heavyweights all the way back to Pinklin Thomas uh, in November of 1992. He went 12 rounds with him, so he will go a ways with fighters and actually has some wins like a TKO over Melton Bowen, beat Rick Sikorsky. He beat Samson Pahua. Can you explain to me how that happened? After some of the other performances, it's hard. You know, the guy we talked about it in the open can find some sudden explosiveness once in a while. That's why he's a little bit over 500. But then you get a night like tonight where he's simply reluctant from the opening bell and doesn't give himself any chance. I find it fascinating because Samson Pahua, we saw him here in top rank boxing. And my goodness, he, was a, he looked like a fine young heavyweight. In any case, we've got a minute left to go in the eighth round. Shannon Briggs is pitching a shutout. And now looking maybe to try and take Greg Payne out of there here in the eighth round. It's hard to think of eight rounds being any longer for Craig Payne than these days have been where he's had no excitement for himself in the bout, no competitiveness, and it basically has endured a beating from the first minute. There's that nice double left hook from Shannon Briggs. Petty Atlas, of course, a very fine trainer, and you see his stamp all over Shannon Briggs, and Shannon Briggs who does not have a wealth of amateur experience, has done a great job of picking up all these things from Atlas. He's seeing a very educated left hand in this bat for Shannon Briggs. He has avoided the temptation to load up and he's down with his jab on the So it's over. Eight rounds have come and gone uneventfully for Craig Payne, except that he took a lot of punches. He's shaking his head. He's not happy with his performance, obviously. And the exchange, Shannon Briggs looked at him like he expected more out of him, too. It's Teddy Atlas there, wiping uh, the sweat from the brow of Shannon Briggs. Teddy, of course, has trained many uh, excellent fighters, including the former heavyweight champion, Michael Moore. Trainer really is starting to get his notoriety in the last year or so. Excellent technician and a good motivator. So it looks like Shannon Briggs will uh, capture his 21st victory as a pro, but did not get a KO. And uh, the lopsided edge, more than 200 punches wow. of an advantage. And the surprising thing there is, usually with that kind of dominance, a fight has stopped somebody who's been knocked out by the shots. And yet, sometimes the uglier a fighter wins, the better it is for him as far as what he learned, how he gets extended, etc. Et and Shannon Briggs uh, basically 
had target practice tonight and didn't make any mistakes. All right, we're sure that will be reflected on the scorecards. Let's go up to Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, all three judges, Frank Cairo, Vincent Renoni, and Al DeVito scored about the same. 80 to 72 for the winner by unanimous decision, Shannon Briggs. So Shannon Briggs gets a win. Hey, by the way, Michael Buffer, they're shooting him for GQ magazine tonight. A lot going on here. We'll be back. Stay with us. As your engine revs higher, the oil inside creates a hydrodynamic wedge, a protective layer that builds up and keeps engine parts separated. But as your oil's viscosity breaks down, so can the wedge. That's why Kestrel GTX provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. Because if your viscosity breaks down, what's next? Kestrel GTX, engineered for greater protection against breakdown. Look for Kestrel's free NHL hat offer at these and other leading outlets. Well, Dave Bontempo is in the ring with uh, happy winner Shannon Briggs. Let's go up to him right now. Okay, thanks, Al. Shannon, you thought he was going to try to survive, but were you surprised he did it to this extent? Well, definitely, Dave. Today I get a C because, well, not even a C, probably a D with Teddy because, you know, like I said this morning, these veteran guys, what they want to do is they want to try to survive and do little crafty things to make it, and he did just that. He kind of calmed me a little bit, you know. I was doing, like, the first combination, and I should have stepped up with the second and third, but it's all a learning experience. When you see a guy just being a punching bag like that, what goes through your mind? What do you have to guard against? Well, just look out for the sneaky punches because, like I said this morning, you know, he'll, he'll look to go seven, eight rounds and then make a big spurt somewhere. And, you know, I'm not really happy with my, my, my performance, but hopefully I'll be back and get to do it, another, do it again. At any point in here, did you think you were going to get him out of there? Yeah, a few times, but a part of being a young fighter is, is you know, not, not kind of sometimes not believing. And, and I kind of had some doubts that he was hurt at times and that he was going to be a sneaky veteran and try to catch me in the later rounds. So. I kind of slowed down. Now, your other opponents have not gone any distance. This guy no. did. I mean, but did he do you a favor in that respect? No, nah, well, you know, he didn't want, he felt the power. You know, I'm a strong young guy, I'm 23 years old, and uh, he, I guess he's seen the 17 knockouts, and he said, this guy can't punch. So he didn't make, he didn't take any risk in, in throwing shots that would, I could catch him inside. So, you know, my, my thing is I have to take it to the next level. Okay, what could you have done if you faced this kind of a style again? What do you think you would do? Well, too, unfortunately, I picked up in the eighth round. I noticed that when I jabbed, when I even faked the jab coming in, he went defensive. So I learned that how important the jab is. Even when the guy's running, the best thing is the jab because this will give me range coming in. Okay, Shannon, congratulations. Thank Still you. a very lopsided victory for you. Shannon Briggs wins by more than 200 punches and gets something to improve upon in later fights. Stay with us on Top Rank Boxing. We'll be back with more right after this. Face it, shaving is a pain. It strips away the skin's moisture, leaving it hot, dry, and burning. But now there's proof you can take the heat out of shaving. Introducing Sensitive from Old Spice. It's the one with cooling sensates, an invigorating blast of real refreshment that cools skin scorched by shaving. Prove it to yourself. Try new Sensitive from Old Spice. It's more than a great scent. This is a cooling blast of real refreshment that takes the heat out of shaving. As your engine revs higher, the oil inside creates a hydrodynamic wedge, a protective layer that builds up and keeps engine parts separated. But as your oil's viscosity breaks down, so can the wedge. That's why Kestrel GTX provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. Because if your viscosity breaks down, what's next? Kestrel GTX, engineered for greater protection against breakdown. Look for Kestrel's free NHL hat offer at these and other leading outlets.